Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India A logical and a systematic approach to solving organic chemistry problems for CSAR net In the third module stereogenicity stereoselectivity enantioselectivity diastereoselectivity and asymmetric induction will be seen I am Dr. Balaji, currently working as Associate Professor in the School of Biotechnology at Jawaharlal Nehru University. This project is sponsored by DTH Swayam Prabha, MHRD, New Delhi. In this module, let us look at what we are going to learn. We will be looking at stereoselectivity. We will also look at topicity, mainly enantiotopic and diastereotopicity and we will also look at some examples related to asymmetric induction. So, let us recall some of the basic things about stereochemistry. A stereogenic center of a molecule is a atom, axis or plane that is focus of stereoisomerism. That is the focus of stereoisomerism. So, we will be looking at some of the examples like how a point symmetry exists center of symmetry exists, plane of symmetry, all those things we will be looking at in this particular session. Generally, there will be at least three different groups bound to the stereo center. Interchanging any two different groups creates new, new stereoisomers. So, these are some of the basic things we will be actually looking at. We are recalling these information so that it helps us understand how the problems are basically solved. Enantiomers are non-superimposable molecules. They are having object and mirror image relationship. So, two sets of compounds having object and mirror image relationship and they are non-superimposable mirror images are called enantiomers. And when we talk about diastereomers, diastereomers are non-superimposable molecules and there is also no object mirror image relationship between those two sets of compound. So, let us look into the first problem. So, in this question, it is given that in the following Markovnikov of addition reaction, the products A and B are obtained and these two products are whether it is a homomer or it is going to be an enantiomer or a diastereomer or a regioisomer. So, these are all the four different types of compounds that will be formed. So, here is the starting material that is given and the reaction is Markovnikov of addition, it is addition of HBr2 an alkene double bond. So, let us work out the solution. So, here we are going to look at what are all the different products that will be formed. So, this is basically a simple addition reaction. So, HBr addition across a double bond. So, here 2 according to the Markovnikov rule, the negative part of the addendum attaches itself to the most substituted carbon atom. So, that is what is the basics of Markovnikov addition. So, here we have the hydrogen being added to the terminal carbon atom, the bromine is added to the internal carbon atom. So, this is how the addition takes place. And since we already have a stereogenic center, the second incoming bromine can be arranged in the cis orientation or both are facing the same side that is one product and they are in the trans orientation. So, that is a another product. So, these are all the two products that are going to be formed in this reaction and we are going to look at what is the relationship between these two compounds whether they are homomers enantiomer, diastereomer or regioisomer. So, here are the two compounds which are written in Fisher projection formula. So, the conversion of a normal line drawing into this is done using Newman projection and that uh, since you are already aware of that, we are not going to look into how we arrived at this structure. So, basically we have a methyl group here and we have a bromine and there is one hydrogen atom attached to this one. So, the methyl group is written here and the bromine which is on the top is written here and the hydrogen is written here. So, in the next carbon because we are looking at the projection formula like a Newman projection formula, the first one will be written like a, a 
3 bonds and uh, we will write a circle and the second uh, carbon is also represented. So, here the second carbon is represented at the top. So, here uh, we have a methyl group at the top and that is written like that and the bromine which is pointing towards the observer is written on the left and uh, the hydrogen which is present here is written on the right. So, this is one type of isomer. The other isomer only the front bromine's position is interchanged. So, in the first one we draw the bromine in the right hand side. So, here we will be drawing it on the left hand side. The second carbon there is no change in the stereo arrangement. So, we are going to look at what is the relationship between these two isomers. So, here we can solve this problem by two different methods. One is uh, I am going to show like uh, if you are aware of RS nomenclature, we can also find out whether the stereochemistry or the stereogenic center this one and this one what is the stereo arrangement through that we can also find and the other one is actually given here. We are going to look at whether there is any mirror image relationship or not between these two sets of compounds. So, here if you look at this particular carbon the priority according to CIP rule is given to bromine is the highest priority group. The second one is in the stereogenic center we have two carbon atoms both are having the same atomic number. So, we have to go for the next point of difference. So, when we compare between these two carbon atoms here we have a bromine atom which is having the highest atomic number compared to hydrogen atom present on this carbon. So, this will get the second priority and this one will become the third priority and the fourth one is hydrogen is actually pointing away from the observer. So, if you go from 1, 2, 3 this is in the clockwise direction. So, the assignment given to this particular carbon that CIP rule is R configuration for this carbon and if you look at the second carbon. So, this bromine is getting the highest priority and uh, the same rule applicable here the second point of difference is this carbon will get the second highest priority and the methyl group gets the third highest priority and the hydrogen is actually pointing away from the observer. So, here also 1, 2, 3 is present in the clockwise direction. So, the stereogenic uh, assignment for this particular second carbon is also R. So, we have R R as the product and let us look at the second uh, molecule that will be formed in this reaction. So, here the bromine is pointing away from the observer again the highest priority is 1, this is highest priority 2, then the next priority 3, but here the hydrogen is actually pointing towards the observer. So, what assignment we are going to give will be exactly opposite of that because the hydrogen the lowest priority group is pointing towards the observer. So, we have to give the other configuration. So, this is 1, 2, 3 is in the clockwise direction and the hydrogen is pointing towards the observer. So, this will become the yes configuration for this particular stereo center and we already know there is no change in the second stereogenic center for this compound. So, this will remain like R only. So, if you look at the configuration for the second compound it is S and R. So, what is the relationship here given? The two R R is present in one of the compound and R and S is present in the second carbon. So, what is the relationship between these two? So, we can clearly say there is no object mirror image relationship between these two compound and only one chiral center is common for uh, both the compounds, but the second one is different. So, these type of arrangements are basically called as diastereomeric uh, relationship because we do not have a object mirror image relationship in this compound. So, this compound can be assigned a name as diastereomer and if you look at this Fisher projection also there is no object mirror image relationship between these two compounds because bromine is present here which is away and if you look at these two uh, bromines which are present in the right hand side compound they are present on the same side. So, there is no object mirror image relationship between compound A and B. So, that also can be used to explain that this compound or basically diastereomers. But when we look at the second compound there is a 
half of the molecule is a reflection or mirror image of the other half of the molecule. So, this compound is basically called as a meso compound and if you look at actually the optical activity of these two compounds, the first compound is going to be optically active whereas the second compound is going to be optically inactive because it is a meso compound. There is a internal reflection present in this compound and if you go to the next example like uh, if the reaction is a anti marconic of addition that is if the reaction is carried out in the presence of hydrogen peroxide then what are all the type of compound that will be formed. So, here the two examples are given here and if you look at these two compounds although we wrote this uh, first carbon as a stereogenic one actually this is not a stereogenic one because here we have only two hydrogen these are both uh, methylene hydrogens and uh, this compound is basically one and the same compound. So, when the anti Marconic of addition happens on this particular compound, we are not going to get any different product, we are going to get only the same compound. Let us move on to the next problem. So, in this problem, we are going to find out what is the relationship between HA and the HB. There are two hydrogen atoms. So, what is the relationship between these two hydrogen atoms and also we have to find out what is the relationship between bromine 1 and 2. So, we have a bromine 1, we have bromine 2. So, there are two types of uh, relationships we are going to find out. Uh, so, four answers are given for this problem. The first one is the HA and the HB are enantiotopic in nature. That means, there is an object mirror image relationship between these two hydrogen atoms and uh, Br1 and Br2 are diastereotopic. So, like the previous case there is no object mirror image or non superimposability present for this particular replacement of these two bromine atoms. We, when we work out this problem we will see how we are assigning diastereotopic and enantiotopic phases for these two atoms we will see. And the second answer B is given is HA and HB are diastereotopic in nature, Br and Br2 are enantiotopic and similarly for C it is HA, HB are diastereotopic, but Br and Br1 and Br2 are homotopic. Homotopic means they are one and the same, there is no difference between these two things. And the last answer is HA, HB are uh, enantiotropic or Br1 and Br2 are homotopic. So, there are four choices given as the compound could have any one of the assignment or the configuration. So, we are going to solve this particular problem. So, what is the solution for this one? To solve whether it is a enantiotopic or diastereotopic phases, we are actually going to replace the atoms with some other atom and when we replace one atom with another atom and if we get uh, what is the relationship whether it is a uh, object to mirror image relationship or there is no uh, whether it is superimposable or non superimposable all those things we can actually work it out. From that we can exactly say whether it is a homotopic phase or enantiotopic phase or diastereotopic phase all those things can be studied. So, that is what we are going to work out in this particular case. So, here the first compound the atom one of the hydrogen that is H A atom is replaced with a X atom. So, this is given as a yellow color and the HB is retained as the same one that means hydrogen is represented as HB here and in the second one we are replacing the second hydrogen atom with the new atom. So, we have HA in the first one replaced and HB in the second one replaced. If you look at the relationship between these two there is no object mirror image because here we have two bromine atoms, but here we have two hydrogen atoms or it is methyl groups which are present here as shown here. So, that means these are not having any object mirror image relationship between these two things. So, obviously, you know what is going to be the answer. So, this is going to be a diastereotopic one and we will move on to the other one which is the bromine atom. So, here we have the bromine atom in 1 and the bromine atom in 2. If we replace one of the bromine atom with another atom and see what is the relationship that exists between these two. So, if you look at one of the bromine atom is replaced in the first one and in the second one we have replaced the second bromine atom. So, if you look at whether there is something uh, object mirror image relationship exists between these two things you can actually see. If you lift the molecule and exactly place on this one. See here is one bromine atom which is colored in a different uh, color 
and here the first one. So, even though these two are both bromine atoms, but uh, they are not having uh, non they are non superimposable mirror images. So, now you know what is the relationship between these two bromine atoms, this is going to be enantiotopic in nature. So, what is going to be the answer? The hydrogen atoms are going to be diastereotopic in nature and the bromine atoms are going to be enantiotopic in nature. So, this is the correct answer for this particular problem and the HA and HB are not enantiotopic in nature. Similarly, the bromine 1 and bromine 2 are not uh, diastereotopic in nature. So, we can rule out all the other possibilities and the correct answer for this one is B. And if you go to the next uh, problem, we have to identify two enantiomers among the following compounds. So, we have four compounds are given here. We have to identify which two compounds are enantiomers. So, compound A is shown here, compound B, compound C and compound D. So, the four multiple choice answers for this question is A and B are enantiomers or A and C are enantiomers, B and D are enantiomers or C and D are enantiomers. So, four different combinations are given. Let us work out uh, this problem. So, let us draw the Fisher projection formula of this compound and we can also work it out. So, there is also another method as I mentioned earlier, the RS configuration also we can assign. So, whichever is convenient for you, you can choose and if you are familiar with how to convert the line drawing into Fisher projection, then you can follow it very quickly. If you are not fine with uh, converting a line drawing into the Fisher projection, you can actually go for the RS nomenclature which is much easier and convenient one and uh, through that we can actually find out the answer also. So, first I will show the Fisher projection and I will also show the RS configuration both in this particular case. So, the line drawing can be converted to the Fisher one as shown here, A, B, C, D are given here. So, the methyl and the carbon and the two carbon and the methyl group, this is the backbone. So, this is the central backbone we have written and uh, the hydrogen is pointing uh, away from the observer, bromine is pointing towards the observer. So, this one is on the right hand side, so we draw the bromine on the right and this is on the left hand side, so we draw on the left. And in the top carbon, what we have to do is in the Newman projection also how, how we write exactly the same way we can replace it here. So, that means the hydrogen if it is present on the right is actually written on the left, bromine if it is present on the left is written on the right in the second carbon or the top carbon, methyl is always kept at the top. So, this is one easy way of writing that or uh, transforming the linear line for drawing into the Fisher projection. You can follow the same for the rest of the molecule also. So, the main uh, central carbon framework is here, methyl that is carbon, carbon, carbon and hydrogen. So, here if you look at methyl, carbon, carbon and hydrogen. So, that is how we write the central line and here the hydrogen is on the right. So, it is pointing towards the observer and the bromine is on the left, it is pointing away from the observer. So, it is written on the left and in the top carbon, if you look at the bromine is on the left, so it should be written on the right and the methyl is on the right hand side pointing towards the observer. So, this is actually written on the left hand side. So, this way we can convert the line drawing into the Fisher projection. So, the rest of the things also are written in that way. Now, if you compare the compounds, what are all, uh, what, which two compounds are uh, having object mirror image relationship, but they should not, uh, they should be non superimposable. Then only we call them as a di uh, enantiomers. So, that is what we are going to see. Uh, the first compound can be rewritten like this one as shown here. And the second compound, the hydrogen is kept at the top. So, what we do is we actually rotate the all the groups in this particular carbon so that the methyl group reaches the top because for rest of the compounds we have both the methyl is at the top at the bottom. So, if we have the same type of arrangements in rest of the compound then it becomes much easier for us to compare. So, when we rotate the atoms what uh, groups we have to do is we have to rotate all the groups. So, the methyl will go from the left to the top, hydrogen will move uh, from the top to the right and the bromine will move uh, from right to the left. So, that is how we made a one rotation of all the groups in a continuous fashion. So, with this rotation we are not going to change any configuration. So, that we have to keep in mind all the time. So, by that rotation what we are having is here is the two compounds, the top compound is actually rewritten or redrawn uh, for a convenience as shown in the second one. 
and similarly in the fourth one we have the hydrogen at the top. So, that we are actually moving to the we have to move it to the right because we want to have the methyl group on the top. So, you can do either way whatever changes you are doing you have to do it in the same fashion. So, if you are moving methyl from the right hand side to the top which is a counterclockwise rotation then hydrogen has to rotate here and bromine has to rotate here. So, this way all the three group has to rotate. So, that is the reason when we change that. So, methyl goes to the top, hydrogen goes to the left and bromine is on the right. So, we have four different arrangements Fisher projection for all the four compounds are given. Now, we have to look at what are all the compounds, what is the relationship between these two. So, if you look at uh, compound C and compound D, uh, this looks more or like uh, one and the same compound. When we do the RS Naman uh, assignment for this compound, we will exactly figure it out whether these are two different compounds or same compounds or whether any other relationship exists between these two compounds, we will see. So, now A and B are same compounds or homomer. If you look at exactly A and B, so methyl is at the top, bromine is on the right hand side, here also bromine is on the right hand side. But now you will say it looks like a mirror image of this compound because these two are uh, in the first one the bromine is on the right, but in the second compound bromine is on the left. So, if we exactly look at these two compounds what we can assume is oh this is a mirror image, but actually they are not mirror images they are actually one and the same compound. And then if we look at C and D it looks like uh, these are enantiomers. So, we will confirm whether they are enantiomers or not. And a, B and C that means A and B are one and the same compound. So, A, B and C and A, B and D. So, this relationship basically diastereomers. So, how do we assign whether it is enantiomer or diastereomer? We can go to the RS nomenclature where we can exactly find it out. So, let us do that uh, small uh, workout of this one based on the RS nomenclature. So, here the bromine is having the highest priority. So, this is given uh, number 1 and here we have a hydrogen atom, here we have a methyl group and here a carbon with the bromine. So, from the previous case also we had seen this carbon will become the second priority. So, this methyl carbon will get the third priority and the hydrogen is actually away from the observer. So, if you look at 1, 2, 3, these three groups are in the anti clockwise direction. So, S is the configuration for this particular carbon. And when we move on to the second carbon or the back carbon, so here the hydrogen is pointing towards the observer. So, this is the one thing we have to keep in mind. So, whatever configuration we are assigning, uh, going to assign is going to be reversed because the hydrogen is pointing towards the observer. So, we follow the same assignment here, the bromine is having the highest priority 1. So, this carbon will become the second highest priority, this will become the third highest priority. So, if you look at 1, 2, 3, this is again, uh, this is in the counter clockwise direction, but hydrogen is pointing towards observer. So, the S will become R. So, that is the reason the front carbon will have the configuration S, the second carbon will ca have the configuration R. Similarly, when we follow the same for the rest of the molecules. So, for this molecule we will have R configuration in this one because hydrogen is pointing towards the observer. So, this is the highest priority group, this is the second highest priority group, this is the third highest priority group. So, 1, 2, 3 they are in the counter clockwise direction, but hydrogen is pointing towards the observer. So, this becomes R configuration and for the back one also when we are going to make the assignment we can also find out it is going to be S. Yes. And uh, similarly, if we extend the same for the rest of the two compounds, we will see the first carbon in the th compound C is R configuration and the second backside carbon is R configuration. And for D it is S configuration for the front carbon and uh, S configuration for the back carbon. So, if you look at the relationship between all these compounds, compound A and B, the uh, first carbon is S, the second carbon is R. But in the second compound, the first carbon is R and the second carbon uh, is S. So, it looks as if these are having uh, object mirror, they are not having object mirror image relationship. Uh, so, whether it is enantiomer or homomer, we are going to actually see. So, here is the Fisher projection or the Fisher drawing of the same compound. But when we look at the compound, there is a object mirror image relationship within the molecule. So, there is a plane of symmetry which is present in the molecule itself. So, that is the reason 
this compound is basically a meso compound or optically inactive compound. Both of these compounds are basically meso compounds because here also you will have uh, the same object to metatomy image relationship and these are actually uh, one and the same compound. And when we look at uh, C and D, the first compound is having R configuration, the second center is having R configuration. So, we have R R isomer as one of the compound and in the second one it is S and S isomer. So, when we say enantiomers, every center will have opposite configuration. When two compounds are compared, each center has opposite configuration in the other compound, then we call these two compounds as enantiomers. So, that is the reason in this particular case, compound C and D are having the object mirror image relationship and they are non superimposable compounds. So, these are called enantiomers. So, the solution to the problem is compound C and D are enantiomers. And let us move on to the next problem. So, here we are going to find out the same thing, the relationship between the two methyl groups. We have two methyl groups drawn here and what is the relationship between these two compounds? So, they may be homotopic, they are uh, diastereotopic or enantiotopic or constitutionally heterotopic. So, these are all the four uh, MCQ choices given for this problem and uh, let us look at uh, what is the actual uh, structure for this compound. So, we can actually replace, so whenever we are going to identify whether it is a homotopic or a heterotopic atom or topicity when we are going to do, we have to follow the same exercise. So, replace one group or one atom with a phantom atom or other groups and do the same for the second one and we are going to find out what is the relationship between the replacement of two compound, two groups what is the relationship based on that we say those compounds are having, those two atoms are having whether enantiotopicity or diastereotopicity or they are one and the same compound all those things we are going to see. So, here the molecule is drawn in the three dimensional structure as shown here, here is one of the methyl group, here is another methyl group. So, these are pointing towards the observer, of course, in the real molecule one is pointing towards the observer, another one is pointing away from the observer. So, uh, for our convenience, I have actually rotated the molecule in such a way that these two methyl groups are pointing towards us, so that it becomes easy for us to visualize. So, the rest of the molecule is actually placed behind, so that we know exactly what is the relationship between these two. So, uh, in the first one, one of the methyl group is replaced and in the second one, another methyl group is replaced. So, if you look at these two uh, images we are going to see how the relationship actually exists. So, we are taking a, a small transparent structure of these two and if you look at here, both are exactly uh, placed on each other. So, even though we look here as a object mirror image relationship exists like that, there is a mirror image of these two compound exists like that, it may appear to us, but in reality when you superimpose because what is enantiomer? Enantiomer should be having no, uh, uh, they should be having object mirror image relationship, but they should be non superimposable. So, these are all the two requirements. So, here we are looking at object mirror image relationship exist, but when we superimpose, we are getting one and the same compound. So, that means these are one and the same compounds and there is no object mirror image relationship exist according to this three dimensional structure. So, what we can say is this compound actually uh, these two methyl groups are basically homotopic in nature. 